good morning. It's been so good to have so many people here these last previous weeks of gathering and singing together. Obviously, with the new guidelines, we've kind of called an audible and brought things back down to a smaller team to keep safe during these times. And But we're also just reminded that we are most safe that we are when we are here with Jesus and we know that he's here with us. So join us as we worship him this morning. Oh 
Subcity Life, Jerome here. I want to give you an update on what's going to be taking place with City Life groups and City Life homes. With the new guidelines that have been rolled out in our state from the officials and the leaders in the government, we will be abiding and doing everything possible to continue to be a good neighbor. So we'll pause in-person homes and in-person groups. Everything then will go virtual. You might hear that and think that's the wisest thing in the world. You might hear that and think, oh, I'm so bummed. But I wanna read Romans 12, 12 and encourage us in this passage and invite you to pray and be a part of this season together of the church that God is building here at City Life. Rejoice in hope, be patient in affliction, be persistent in prayer. We will rejoice in the hope of the Lord. We're making a choice to do that right now. Be patient in affliction. What a hard quality to choose to live out. Patient through affliction, but be persistent in prayer. Will you pray for us during this season? Will you pray for the body here at City Life? Will you be patient during these trying times? And will you also rejoice in the hope that we have in Jesus? A little bonus with these three weeks. Uh, people have said that it takes 21 days to establish a new habit. This would be a great kind of reminder. Get a new habit in this season. As our width can't be out there, seeing as many people, maybe our depth with the Lord in these next three weeks can experience a breakthrough like no other time. God's with us. Be encouraged, friend. We are dreaming and looking forward to 2021, but we want to bloom where we're planted in this year. This weekend, kicking off a brand new couple week message that's stirring up in my heart, 2020 invested, and then going into December, what I want for Christmas. We love you.
fighting the battles that we can't fight ourselves. Thank you for standing in our place. We love you so much, and we can never thank you enough. Thank you for meeting us where we're at. You deserve all the praise. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. I'm super excited for the message today, and Jerome will be up in just a moment. My name is Crystal. We're so glad you joined us today. I'm here to remind you, you are loved, belong, and have purpose. We want to connect with you. Click the link in the comments or on our website under connect and tell us more about you. If it's your first time here, make sure you let us know. We have a gift just for you. Kids City on the Go is still coming to your home, but we're moving virtual. Our leaders have enjoyed investing in your kids where they're reminded that they are loved, belong, have purpose, and the future. Head to our website to sign your family up. This year, your generosity has allowed us to reach so many people throughout the city, even in the middle of such a unique time. Thank you for your giving and helping us love the city one life at a time. Without skipping a beat this year, you've helped over 10 households move with our Love the City truck, helped families in need of financial assistance or food, supported local organizations, including partnering with the school district, supported our ministers in training to attend Bible school online, and even have been able to love on several families that have lost loved ones this year. That's just a few. Basically, a church has been able to be the church, and that's all because of your radical and consistent generosity. Let's continue to give and see how God can reach even more people. 1 John 3, 16 through 18 says, By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and see his brothers in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us love not love the word or talk, but in deed and truth. Let's take a second and ask God how we can love in action and invest generously today in what he's doing here. Here are four ways to give. CityLifeLansing.com, download the Church Center app, text to give, you can text any amount to 84321, Mail a check with a note. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for your consistent generosity to us, Lord. I pray that you would help us 
be your hands and feet as we continue to love the ones here, Lord. Thank you that you are amazing. You love us, and we praise you and give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. What's up, City Life? Jerome here. I'm so excited today to be kicking off just a mini-series, couple weeks here, 2020 Invested. When you think of this year, what do you think about? Is it a year you want to go back to and remember and reflect the Lord did His best work? Or is it something just to move on real quick and say, hey, that year was a waste. I want that year to be done. I want to get this year so over. I think for many of us, what's happening is this. We want to get to 2021, but I believe the Lord wanted 2020 to take place. How this year started off for myself was not one that I planned. Trials came, had a surgery, complications with it, couldn't walk well, was going to the doctor to find out what was wrong, and they said, uh, they put me on some antibiotics, and it was the same antibiotics that they give people that they give for anthrax. If you, got, if you got exposed to anthrax, you're on this type of antibiotic. And then I come down with strep. And then I come down with influenza B the same week. Can't barely walk. Can't barely cough. Can't barely think. Can't barely do this. And I can't move for 21 days. And anybody who knows me, I am driven. The last thing I want to be doing is laying in bed for 21 days. That was January. Then February comes, we can breathe a little bit. We're off of some retreats with our team. We're excited. And then my wife gets super sick. Struggling, can't really breathe. Uh, this is pre-COVID. It could have been COVID. We haven't had her tested for antibody. I mean, we don't know, but she was super sick. And the retreats were mountaintop experiences. We were dreaming as a team, crying, oh, 2020, Jesus, give us your eyes to see. Oh, this is going to be the best year. We are going to see clearer than we've ever seen before. And then COVID world, then quarantine, then people are getting Bad reports, people are losing family members, friends are relapsing. This year has been trying. But looking back to January, looking back to those moments when I didn't have the results I wanted, I believe this with all my heart. Friend, listen to this today. I believe the Lord was depositing in me digging a deep well, putting roots down so far in me, I was being invested in by God. So will I move on and see this year as 2020 wasted, or will I see it as 2020 invested? I have a message titled today, Don't Waste This Year, Invest It. It's super simple like that. Like, don't waste this year, invest it. You might already be thinking, well, come on, I, I, this year I just want it to be over. I want to throw it in the trash. I want to invest it. The definition of investing is this. It's to devote one's time, effort, energy to a particular understanding or an undertaking with the expectation of a worthwhile result. Meaning I am going to expect for something better. That all of this year is not just an interruption, but it's a disruption because God wants to get our attention. 
And today, I want to take us to a place where uh, the, the Word can do its, its best work in us, and the main text will be out of James 1, 2, and 4. To get there first, we've got to go to Luke 8. We have the parable of the, the seed. You, you might be familiar with this. This is the meaning of the parable, verse 11. It says, the seed is the Word of God. The seed along the path are those who have heard, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they not, may not believe and be saved. And the seed on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with, word with joy. Having no root, these believe for a while and fall away in a time of testing. Testing. As for the seed that fell among the thorns, these are the ones who, when they have heard, go on their way and are choked with worries, riches, and pleasures of life and produce no mature fruit. I would dare venture, friend, this morning, every single one of us want to be a seed that's planted in soil that lasts. Every single one of us want to see our best stories ahead of us. We want to hear our story when it's read that we were found faithful. We were, we were invested. We were focused. So these first three responses of people's lives, they get, fall away when stuff happens. But verse 15, lean into this. But the seed in the good ground. This is where, if, you know, this room was packed, I'd say, so look to your neighbor, and I don't even do this all the time, but you look to your neighbor and say, good ground. So for my family and a couple, look to your neighbor and say, good ground. <laughs> the seed in the good ground, these are the ones who, having heard the word with an honest and good heart, hold on to it by, get this, get this, get this, by enduring, produce fruit. We want to be fruit-filled Christians. We do. How? By enduring, which takes us to our main text, James 1, 2 through 4. James is the brother of Jesus. I find his biography very fascinating because as he's growing up with Jesus, <laughs> they have story, I mean, brotherly, uh, uh, we can only begin to imagine all of the interactions. But James wasn't following Jesus while Jesus was alive. Didn't believe he was the Messiah. A definitely family member. Man, my brother's gifted. He's doing some amazing things. But then post, he gets an encounter, resurrected Jesus. He's seeing, oh my goodness, my brother isn't just my brother. He is the Lord. He's the Messiah. So when he's writing in the book of James, we lean in in a way that's interesting. So much so that he believed his brother was the risen king, that eventually he was killed for believing in Jesus. That he wasn't just his brother, but that he was the Savior, the blessed hope, the God-man, the one, infinite king, supreme one, creator of the universe, maker of everything. Everything pauses when he steps in the room. So when James writing here in chapter 1, verse 2, consider it a great joy. Thanksgiving right around the corner, Christmas season, great joy. We'll have some joyful times. What kind of joy are we talking about here, James? My brothers and sisters, this is a family conversation. This is for those who believe in Jesus. Whenever you experience various trials, so consider it a great joy whenever you experience various trials because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance and let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete lacking nothing now if i work that backwards i'm sure all of us would say i don't want to lack anything i want to be mature i want to be complete i want to be somebody who endures i want to walk my faith out am i willing though to consider it joy as trials come Trials through the election, trials through COVID turbulence, trials through racial unrest, and just trials that are coming about media nonstop, hitting our door, trials. The temptation is just to move on and waste this year. I really believe the Lord wants us to invest this year. 
Let's read that passage again out of the message. The message puts it this way. Consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. You want to see what's in somebody, watch them go through a trying time. And what's been convicting at times this year, what was coming out of me, was showing its true colors. And I need the Lord to bring that out of me so that I could pause and let him do his best work. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so that you become mature, well-developed, not deficient in any way. Don't waste this year. Invest it. When we think of west, wasting versus investing, wasting, to carry the analogy a little further, when a trial comes, I want to escape. I'm going to then go turn to a vice. I might turn to a Netflix binge. I might turn to something worse and some type of previous addiction or new addictions come. I just want to escape. I want to medicate. I want to sedate. And I want to move on. And I want it to end. The Lord doesn't do that. He does his best work in the wilderness. We get Jesus going alone with the Father, pouring out his life, sweating to the point that his, blood, his, his sweat is turning to drops of blood as he's under so much anguish and agony as he's considering the cross before him. When we want to waste versus investing, it's when it doesn't feel good, we want to waste and just move on, not invest. When we suffer, we want to waste and move on, not invest. When change happens, we want to waste and not invest. Fear, loss, anxiety, risk. When it's slow, not immediate results, we want to waste and not invest. I was listening to a podcast the other day and they said something along the lines is, do church leaders and Christians, and that's one of the mistakes we make is there's church leaders and then there's Christians. Well, anyone who is in Jesus Christ is a leader. Then there is people that are helping lead leaders, but each one of us need to see ourselves as leaders. So as we profess Jesus, we want to be like Jesus. He's our teacher. He's our type. He's our example. He's our Lord. He's the one who pursued us and found us when we were nothing in our sin, dead, and he gave us new life. And they were saying on the podcast to the effect of, do leaders see this year as an interruption or a disruption? And they said, sadly, I believe 75% of leaders see it as an interruption. They're just going to return to the old things as opposed to a disruption that God's trying to do a new thing in us. He wants to strip us of the world and he wants to get us back to him. Don't waste this year, invest it. You might hear and be like, man, he's pretty passionate. He's saying, uh, hey, he, he must be investing it. No, this has been hard for me to pause. <laughs> this has been hard. But when we are wasting a disruption to choose joy through this trial and endure, that is not good. We see it as the devil. Like, oh, it's, it's the devil doing all of this year. What if God is allowing this whole year to happen because he knows that we have not been abiding in him? We've been to too concerned with what looks like security, what looks like things we can trust, what looks like things that I can put my hope in and I can't. Not relationships, not even family, definitely not uh, uh, some type of infrastructures, not, not health care, not, not government. I can't put my hope in anything. And that is good news, friends, because we have our hope in the king over everything. And he's coming back one day. We waste the disruption when we make it about ourselves. And today we're saying, God, I want you to invest, and I want to see what you're doing. I want to give us uh, 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 five points to not waste this year, but invest it. Number one, during trying times, God is always trying to get our attention to invest. Consider it great joy when you face many trials. So God's always trying to get our attention, and he's saying, invest. Put, 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 put your stake in the ground. Let your roots go down. Let the deep work happen. Invest. 
You might not see it today, but invest for a return that's worthwhile for tomorrow. Put your effort, your time, your energy, invest. This last season, my wife and uh, the kids and I, we got to, we took a trip. We've been gone for a little bit. Uh, it's, great, it's great to be back. Love you all, City Life. It's, it's great to be here. It's great to, you know, be in homes. and uh, It's just great. I, uh, we missed everybody. But we knew that the best thing we could do is not work harder, but let the word Lord work, uh, work in us and pause and say, God, what do you want to do? And during that time, as we went from fast and then we went to slow, the hardest work was the slow work. Pain comes out. The pressure of the day-to-day. The, the nonstop voice to produce, to produce, that my worth is tied in what I produce. I had to decompress. So what was taking place was the inner life was being built through, through, here, endurance. Let the Lord cook. Don't, don't rush the process. This year is not wasted. It is invested. It's how the Lord builds people. Our secret power is found in the secret place. And he's faithful to come. But we're too antsy to wait. But the gospel is that Jesus came. Number two, you got to hear this. Endure. Don't give up. Don't waste. Don't escape. Don't move on. Endure. Don't give up. It's marathon runners and people run long, run, run long races. You often see they pan to the crowd and the, the family and friends are cheering on like, hey, you know, and they got the cups of water and they, and they run in a group of people and they'll have pace runners and all that is to help someone endure and to finish better. Don't give up. Romans 5, 3 and 4. Four puts it this way, and not only that, but we also boast in our affliction, so trials, trying times, because we know that affliction, this is mature. We want to go from immature to mature. Now, if you want to stay immature, waste 2020. But if you want to get to maturity, invest 2020. Because we know that affliction, suffering, and trials, I, I added that because they're all the same. I want us to see those connected. Produces endurance. Endurance produces proven character, and proven character produces hope. We want to be that good soil, right? The, the seed returns and multiplies. The gospel, the word of God in our hearts returns and multiplies. That's by enduring. Now suffering, get this, suffering, affliction, trials, it's a teacher in a class none of us wanted to sign up for. I mean, on your classroom door, if it says suffering, you know, you might look in, you get somebody in there, you're like, whoa, that's kind of weird. Like, why'd you sign up for the class of suffering? Especially in our context, the last thing we want is to suffer. We want to move on, microwave, give me a new movie, give me a new TikTok, give me a new thing. I, I just need a glimpse. I need another dopamine hit. Can I, can I play a video game? Give me Fortnite. I need something to escape from this reality. The Lord doesn't want us to escape. He wants us to invest. The Lord doesn't want us to run from. He wants us to lean in. That is uh, uh, this idea of how do we take it from today and then we move it to tomorrow. I believe it's this. It's focusing on eternity. It's eternity. Enduring in the New Testament is a characteristic of a man who is not swerved by from his deliberate purpose and his loyalty to his faith and piety by even the greatest trials and sufferings. Number three, when I give up during a trial, I miss its impact to invest, to become more like Jesus. I want to become more like Jesus. And Jesus never wastes our trials. Learning about investing, I know I'm, I'm totally a noob. I'm entry level. I'm 101 when it comes to investing. I don't know a lot. But one thing I've seen in my life investing as I've gotten the game a little bit more and watched other people is when the stock goes down, people want to get out. 
The stock goes down, people want to get out. The beginning of the year, had some health savings account uh, funds. You can buy stock with it. Decided to buy Disney because I like Disney. Disney Plus is happening. I like the movies. I like Mandalorian. Our family, we love it. Friday night, shout out to Mando. Keep making those. John Favreau, uh, Dave Filoni, the whole crew, keep doing it. You're providing joy. It's great to, you know, the battle of good and evil, the force, the Holy Spirit. We apply it to, we talk Christian. We, we, we just lean in. We love Friday nights together as a family. But when I bought that Disney stock and then COVID hit and I saw it go down and it's our health savings account, my first, my first impulse was get out now. But waiting this year, watching it now, it's up percentages just by waiting. God does not waste our trials. He invests in our trials. We think we went down, but God is always trying to take us to a place up, and we do that because he's already fixed in a point of victory. If we want to see, well, how, 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 do, how do I not go volatile with the stock market? Jesus is seated in the heavenly. He is fixed at the right hand of the Father. He is victorious. He's already won, and he's coming back again. Now, when we think of waste, we might think of, okay, fear, failure, loss, worry, weight, power, now, health, all these things we want to say, no, okay, uh, if I don't have the power, if I can't do it now, if I don't have the health, worrying, uh, loss, failure, fear, what do I do? How do I invest? Faith, resilience, understanding. The Father allowing Jesus to do his deepest well in us, prayer, patience. He came and he's coming again. Surrender to the all-powerful one. That's why in worship we can lift our hands and say, God, I'm not in control. Eternity, not now. Health, he's our healer. And his timing's perfect. Just a couple more before we get out of here. Number four, it's in God we trust. You saw it on some money. You hear it in some slogans. But in God we trust. No, no, we trust in God. That might sound silly to some. But in the depths of our soul, we know there's a God that's real. We look all around. We see his fingerprints everywhere. And he made a way through Jesus. Can you hear it? There's that song, um, The Voice of God. Dante, I can't remember his last name. What's his last name? Bo, Bo, Bowie? One of the two. You guys can talk. I mean, they know, they know my family's here. I mean, come on now. What's that? I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's a good one. My kids like it. And we, we worship with it. And the lyrics are like, kind of like, I can't hear it. I can hear, our, um, I can hear the voice of God in a crackle of a bonfire. I can hear it in the middle of an ocean water. It's something I can't explain, but it makes me want to cry. I can hear it when the rain falls on the windows sill. I can hear it on the playground where the children's laughter lives. It makes me want to cry. I can hear it in the country, the Georgia fields of green. I can hear it in the New York busy streets. I can't explain it, but it makes me want to cry. It sounds like my grandma telling you where you came from. Said it's kind of like laughter out of the mouths of your loved ones. It makes me want to cry. Or catching up with an old friend, reminiscing on the back when. It's summertime sprinklers, street side with an ice cream cone. Said it's like a choir singing hymns, hallelujah. The voice of God. To trust in God, just because you don't see it, doesn't mean he's not there. You got to look past, you got to wait, you got to invest. And number five, Jesus did it. And we got the whole stands cheering us on. You say, I don't have the strength to invest. Don't worry, friend. Jesus did, and he does today for you. And we got a whole crowd cheering us on from the grandstands of heaven. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, one of my favorite passages in all of mankind. Therefore, since we also have such a large cloud, large cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every hindrance and the sin that is so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that lies before us 2020 yeah and if the lord says another lap if 2021's like this year or even worse we want to run with endurance 
We want to be mature. I don't feel less prepared for the future. I feel more prepared. Taking those time off, letting the pain and process and the hurts and all of the difficulties come out and, and having the Lord speak to him. He's doing his best work. Let us run with endurance the race that lies before us, keeping our eyes on the one who, who won it all, Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For, for the joy laid before him, consider it pure joy. Well, we have a great leader that showed us the way. He endured the cross despising the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Our God's a finisher, y'all. It's what he does. It's how he lives. It's how he operates. It's how he thinks. He's always trying to endure. And as that passage starts, it says, we have a large cloud of witnesses surrounding us. That's coming out of Hebrews 11, the great chapter on faith and all the people that did amazing things, but they longed to see the day and the access that you and me had. And if they came back today and they were asking, hey, how you, how you been responding to 2020? How, how you been responding to the trials? How you been responding to the adversity? Would they find us wasting this year or infesting this year? Man, I think they'd find so many of us, so many moments of myself, I was wasting and not investing. God, we want to invest for the future. We want to be superheroes that you are pleased in. God invests in us when our stock is down. You're in good company if you feel you're just at the, your stock's down, you're wasting it all. God is willing to invest in us today. A couple actions that we could take is we want to be the seed or we want to have the seed in our soil is number one, invest in the word of God. Like, get the word of God in you all the time, in me. Let's do it. And then two, people who want to become like Jesus. I read, uh, someone said, uh, Jesus rolled with his followers, let's say, roughly 8,000 hours. We want our lives changed with an hour a week on Sunday. It's not going to happen. Do the math. It has to be immersion. We got to invest. There's no substitute for diving deep into Jesus. Prayer for, uh, for, for, for Jesus to change ourselves, the secret power, the word of God, the faithfulness. Mm. And lastly, remember that it's a light lift. God's voice is patient and slow. When it feels forced or heavy, it's not Jesus. It's the world. Even today, if you heard anything that you felt was heavy, God's translating it through his Holy Spirit to make it light. Here's what we can do. You're challenged to invest this year and not waste it. First place is surrender. God, I'm going to give up control. When we're worshiping, we're saying, hey, God, we need this endurance. We've been weeping, we've been crying. We want new endurance. We want a new song. We don't want to go back to the old thing. We don't want to go back to our old ways. We want a new maturity. We want to level up as believers. We want the world to taste and see that our God is good regardless of the circumstance. Yeah? So join us. Let go. Give it all up to Jesus right here, right now. Maybe give your life to him. He's the Lord. Like, give your life. Just say, Jesus, take all my sin. I believe you're the one. He took he went to the cross for me and your sin and, and we can't ever make it to God on our own effort. We are apart from God forever without Jesus' victory and when he steps in and we put our faith in him, it's finished and we are made brand new, set free. Come on, right? Like brand new in that moment. So when you say, God, forgive me, make me brand new, he does it. When you say, God, forgive me for wasting this year, help me invest it, he'll do it. He's faithful to meet us there. Let's sing, friends. Hallelujah, you have torn apart the sea, you have led me through the deep, hallelujah, hallelujah, you're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
took me by the hand. You marched me out and free into your promised land. Now I will not forget you, God. I'll sing of all you've done. By the fury of your love, you took me by get baptized. Uh, two, join a group. Get community. We can't do this thing alone. An hour a week isn't going to cut it. And God never meant it to be that way. Invest and take action in the word of God, the seed going into us to, to be somebody who endures. I pray wherever you hurt, wherever you're worried, whatever you're facing, that right now you will feel the investment of heaven digging a deep well inside of you. a new freedom and a new peace. That God didn't come to interrupt, he came to disrupt and change. And that everything that the enemy is trying to use it for wickedness and to waste and to get us to escape, that right now God is going to give us patience and peace that surpasses our own understanding. In the powerful name of Jesus, be free, friend. Amen. Hey, we'll be here next week. Same time. Connect with somebody. Join a, a group virtually. Still get connected in a home because those are going to come right back around the corner. I think you should join the dream team here. I think serving is, is, is alive. I think it's amazing. And so we'll see you next week, 10 a.m. and 1130. You belong here. We're going to keep loving this city one life at a time. And we won't stop until he makes all things new. Hallelujah, right? Fighting all my battles, lighting every shadow, closer than I think you are. You're closer than I think you are. That was so good. I'm challenged to look at this year as time to invest in God, that He's using this time to make me more like Him. I don't want to waste this year, but invest it. I know you do too. Say yes to invest. Invest in your spirit. Get baptized. I know our daughter wants to. Join our team or our group. Don't do life alone. We are better together. Head over to citylifelancing.com and click connect today. You are loved, belong, and have purpose. Have the best day of your life. See you next week.